Okay, what is going on everyone? Welcome to a new episode of the Science Applied series. Um, so in this video, we're gonna cover the second pull workout for the week. Um, so in our push-pull leg split, we'll be hitting the back, so the lats and the traps, and also the rear delts and the biceps for the second time in this training week, since most of the recent literature shows that hitting each body part at least twice per week is optimal for growth, uh, but frequencies higher than two may not be any better if volume is the same. Um, so just like the last workout, I like to kick things off with two light sets of lat pull-ins for 15 to 20 light reps. And I more or less count these as just part of the warm-up. So these sets don't really count as true working sets. Uh, they're just a way to sort of get the lats loosened up, uh, increase blood flow, and just get everything firing back there. So our first actual exercise is going to be an eccentric accentuated lat pull down for three sets of eight to ten reps. And remember that since the research tends to show no significant differences in lat activation between the pull down and the pull up, I think it makes most practical sense to use both if you can. Uh, so do the pull up on the first workout where you're focusing more on basic strength focused movements and then the pull down on this workout where our focus is going to be more on mindfully activating the muscles of the back and harvesting a strong mind-muscle connection in slightly higher rep ranges. Uh, but anyway, the main goal here is to really focus on the eccentric contraction or the negative portion of the movement. And this is because according to one 2011 NSCA report by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, a significant body of research shows that the eccentric exercise elicits greater gains in lean muscle compared with concentric and isometric contractions. Now the same report also notes that eccentric strength is generally 20 to 50% greater than concentric strength. So to take advantage of these two principles, we're gonna be using a three to four second lowering phase on every rep. Uh, the concentric will be just a standard speed, uh, but you wanna really focus on drawing your elbows down and in on the positive, and then on the negative, actively engage your lats as they stretch. Uh, so a way to visualize this is to think about being too weak to perform the concentric as you're doing the negative. Um, so in other words, think about the eccentric as being a sort of phase failed concentric, where you're not just letting the weight go, but actively resisting on the way up. Uh, so don't just slowly lower the weight. Uh, you wanna contract your lats as hard as possible as they're stretching during the negative. And this is important because, as I've mentioned in a few videos now, uh, the mind-muscle connection is accumulating empirical support in the scientific literature as an effective strategy for enhancing muscle hypertrophy. This is especially the case for simple movements where less of the whole body is involved and you're trying to isolate specific body parts. So up next is a chest supported T-bar row and we're going to be using a band here and we're doing these for three sets of 10 to 12 reps and of course rows are great for targeting both the traps of the mid back and the lats so you really want to think about rowing as the sort of bread and butter of your back routine and really get into the zone here and just bring your absolute best to this movement. Um, also, since you don't accrue the same lower back fatigue as you would with a freestanding row, I think a chest supported row like this uh, really makes a lot of sense from a fatigue management perspective. And your lower back should be getting plenty of work from the squatting and other lower body compound lifts in this program anyway. So the idea behind the band is essentially to alter the resistance curve to make the movement more trap or mid back dominant. And my rationale here is basically that since the lats can't hyperextend the shoulder, meaning they can't bring the arm back behind the torso, the traps are forced to perform this scapular retraction that you see at the top of the row. Um, however, not many people realize that unlike other rowing movements, uh, the T-bar row actually has a pretty unique resistance curve where the most difficult part of the movement is actually in the mid-range of motion, uh, so right here. And past this mid-range, the movement actually gets easier as the machine moves through a pendulum motion while the force of gravity only acts straight down. Uh, so by adding the band, you basically make the top portion where hyperextension happens more difficult, forcing the traps to do more work at the top. And apart from this, uh, research has shown support for combining elastic resistance with free weight resistance for developing strength better than just training with free weights alone. Uh, still, the long-term effects aren't clear, uh, but I think this is, at the very least, a novel way to challenge the back musculature through a different loading pattern than what you'd normally do. Okay, so up next, we're doing two sets of 12 to 15 
reps on the machine high row. And the idea here is to squeeze in a bit more total back volume while focusing on contracting each lat individually, which is great for fixing any left to right imbalances or asymmetries. And you'll wanna start with your smaller or weaker side. Now, usually it's the same side as your non-dominant hand, uh, but not always. And you'll really wanna focus on stretching your lats at the top of each rep and then driving your elbows down while trying to maintain a more or less constant elbow bend uh, throughout the whole range of motion, uh, even though obviously you will have to flex the elbow to some degree to get a full range out of this. And as a so-called finisher for the back, we're gonna be doing three sets of 15 to 20 reps on the kneeling or half kneeling cable pullover. Uh, but we're gonna be modifying the exercise to force the lats through the largest range of motion possible. Um, so you'll wanna use the longest rope that you have available, uh, or like I did for this workout, just use two ropes, sort of using each individually as its own handle. Um, and even though this is an isolation exercise, it does take the lats through a huge range of motion, uh, just about 180 degrees. Um, so you wanna pull the rope all the way back. And if you can actually hyper extend the shoulder at the bottom end, and this will help get the traps a little bit more involved as well. And one thing I've been doing lately is starting the movement at the bottom with about a 65 degree forward lean. Uh, and then as I complete the movement, I bring my posture more upright, which I find both stretches the lats to a greater degree at the bottom and then improves their strength strength curve at the top. And it's normal if you feel some tricep involvement, uh, since the long head of the triceps does also contribute to shoulder extension, and so sort of can't help but assist the lats uh, with this movement. All right, uh, our next exercise is really gonna target the upper traps. So we're doing three sets of 12 to 15 reps on the snatch grip shrug. And since the upper traps perform both scapular elevation, or shrugging your shoulders up, like in a standard shrug, and upward scapular rotation, uh, so like what you do in a lateral raise, uh, the two times shoulder width snatch grip is gonna hit the upper traps through both of these muscle actions to a greater degree. Um, also related research from Pizzari and colleagues found that a dumbbell shrug performed at 30 degrees abduction or with a wider grip was more effective at activating the upper trap fibers than the traditional shrug. So moving on to rear delts, we're gonna be doing a reverse pec deck superset, which can be thought of as a sort of mechanical drop set where for the first 12 reps, we'll be doing a rear delt dominant reverse fly so you'll keep your shoulder blades protracted as much as possible, meaning your upper back will be slightly rounded forward. So just think about the opposite of squeezing your shoulder blades together and sit back as far as you can uh, on the pad uh, with a slight forward lean into the chest pad. And then you wanna think about driving the handles straight out uh, instead of straight back, uh, which will prevent the traps from taking over. And of course, keep a solid mind-muscle connection with the rear delts throughout this whole range of motion. Uh, then with only a few seconds rest in between, we're gonna switch to doing the exact opposite cueing, get the traps more involved so they can extend the set and allow the rear delts to perform more work than they'd be able to do while isolated. Um, so this time you wanna squeeze your shoulder blades together while pulling the weight both out and back on the concentric and then protract your shoulder blades on the eccentric. And you also wanna sit up a little more straight with your arms parallel to the floor. So to round out this workout, we're gonna be doing two exercises for the biceps. Up first is an enhanced eccentric easy bar curl for three sets of 10 to 12 reps. Um, so this will be similar to the lat pull downs. Uh, so pick a weight slightly lighter than what you'd normally use and complete the concentric yourself, uh, but have a training partner push down on the center of the bar during the negative. And if you train solo, uh, simply just double the length of your normal eccentric to sort of mimic this increased exertion. Um, and for good measure, there have been associations between these enhanced eccentrics and increased work capacity and muscle activation in the scientific literature. Um, however, similar increases in muscle mass occurred in both intervention groups, uh, but that could perhaps be because the study only lasted 10 weeks. And finally, we're gonna be finishing off the workout with a dumbbell curl triset for two sets of each movement. Uh, so up first is 12 reps of a reverse grip dumbbell curl. Then we're gonna switch to a hammer grip and do another 10 reps and then switch to a supinated traditional dumbbell curl for the final eight reps. And then we'll repeat that sequence again for the second set after a minute or two of rest. And the rationale here is to pre-exhaust all the elbow flexors except the biceps as much as possible first. Now, most people actually go about pre-exhaustion the wrong way. The most common method is to pre-exhaust the target muscle first with an isolation movement before doing a compound movement to supposedly increase its activation. Uh, but the scientific literature suggests 
this, the exact opposite occurs. When you isolate the target muscle first, you actually cause that muscle to fatigue. Um, so secondary movers take over and the target muscle becomes less active in the compound exercise. Um, so for example, doing leg extensions before leg presses will cause the quads to be less active, not more active on the leg press. Uh, so here we're taking advantage of this principle by fatiguing all of the other elbow flexors like the brachioradialis, the brachialis, and the supinators of the forearm by doing reverse grip curls and hammer curls first, in theory leaving the biceps comparatively more fresh and capable of contributing to the supinated curl. Um, so anyway, with the reverse grip curl and the hammer curl, you want to think about gripping the dumbbell as hard as you can to further involve and fatigue the forearm musculature. And then for the supinated curl, you can try thinking about touching your pinky to the outside of your delt. And this seems to work for improving the biceps mind muscle connection for some people. And you also want to think about curling the weight out in front of you in an arc, not just straight up, which I think will, at least in concept, increase the moment arm of the dumbbell and increase tension on the biceps. Okay, so that's gonna conclude this pull workout, guys, and the full week of pull workouts. Uh, so let's just quickly tally up the volume here for both of these workouts. And I'll just put this up here quickly on the screen uh, so you guys can pause and read for more on volume. Uh, but just to keep it brief, I think this should be the volume sweet spot for most intermediate level lifters. Uh, more advanced guys may want to add one or two more sets or even one or two more exercises uh, and more beginner level lifters may want to slash one or two sets especially when just starting this new program. Uh, but for most lifters, uh, this should be just about right. And before we go, I wanna thank Hims for supporting another science applied video. Uh, Hims is a men's wellness brand offering science-based hair and sexual health products for men. And they've got skincare products on the way a little later this year as well. And I really like Hims because uh, sometimes it can be a little awkward or even inconvenient to have to go into an actual medical clinic for some issues like hair loss and ED. Uh, so with Hims, you can get quality medical recommendations from actual licensed doctors and have medical grade products sent discreetly to your own home. And for viewers of this channel, Hims is offering a virtual visit with a licensed doctor and a month trial of the complete hair kit for just five bucks. So if you go to forhims.com forward slash nippered or click the first link in the description box below, you can get started with your first complete hair kit today. And of course, Hims respects your privacy. So all interactions will be kept confidential. And like I said, all of their treatments are backed by quality scientific evidence. Uh, so thank you, Hims, for sponsoring the video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please leave me a like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you happen to be new. And I'll see you guys all here in the next video.